Out here, in the quiet stretch of wilderness, where the only company is the wind, the earth, in your own footsteps, lies a world of untold treasures. You don't need fancy machines. You don't need to dig like a prospector from a Wild West movie. All you need is to know where to look. Imagine uncovering a glittering piece of Earth's deep history, something nature has hidden for millions of years, just by using your eyes, your hands, and a few well-kept secrets. Because in this episode, we're revealing how anyone, yes, anyone, can find real gemstones in the wild, using nothing but nature itself. Let's start walking. The best places to begin are the forgotten edges of the land. Riverbanks, eroded hillsides, dry creek beds. These places are nature's conveyor belts, revealing layer after layer of what lies beneath. Rain and wind wear away the earth like time's own fingers, peeling back soil, lifting loose stones, and sometimes exposing crystals that sparkle just a little too brightly to ignore. The secret here isn't just in looking, it's in training your eyes to notice. In these raw, natural environments, the ground can be a camouflage of earth tones, but gemstones, true ones, tend to break that rhythm. A flash of deep green, a soft, translucent pink, a chunk of shimmering blue like frozen water. Color is your first clue, not the artificial shine of plastic, but the natural glow of mineral life. Quartz may appear milky or clear. Garnets hide as dark red pebbles. Tourmaline can be green, pink, even black, often tucked inside pegmatite veins that crumble easily with a twist of your fingers. And the best part? You don't need tools to test. You have all you need, your eyes, your fingers, your sense of curiosity. Follow creeks downstream. Nature does the work for you here. Heavy minerals like gemstones and gold get washed out of mountains and rolled down over time, settling into bends in the river or collecting beneath large rocks. When you flip over a stone in a riverbed and catch a glimpse of something glassy and colorful, stay calm and investigate. Look especially for spots where water slows, natural traps where gravel collects. These are rich zones where even a novice can strike lucky. Feel around with your bare hands. If something seems unusually heavy for its size, that could be your first physical clue. Next, consider the soil. In areas where the ground is rich in iron, copper, or aluminum, certain gemstones flourish. Malachite and azurite, those deep emerald and cobalt hues, form near copper veins. Jasper and agate love to settle into volcanic terrain. And where ancient lava flows once cooled, You'll often find pockets where nature formed crystal clusters just waiting to be picked up. Now your shoes might be muddy, but your heart will be racing. Because once you find one, everything changes. The way you see rocks, dirt, even shadows suddenly becomes sharper. Your senses adjust. You begin to see like a prospector. And don't forget the power of sunlight. A gem that looks dull and shade might shine like fire under full daylight. Train yourself to view from different angles. Tilt your head. Move around the stone. Gems often reveal themselves when the light hits just right. That flicker of reflection, an edge too smooth, a shape too symmetrical, can give away something precious. Another underrated technique? Check where animals dig. It sounds strange, but burrowing creatures like groundhogs and armadillos unearth all sorts of material. If you notice a fresh mound of earth, sift through it. You never know what nature's engineers might have dragged to the surface. And here's where it gets thrilling. Sometimes it's not a polished gem that catches your eye. It's a rough chunk, ugly by ordinary standards, but unmistakably out of place. These are the hidden gems in their most honest form. They don't shout, they whisper. Rough gemstones aren't always flashy. A black tourmaline may look like a broken piece of coal. A sapphire may be clouded with inclusions. But when you hold it up to the light, there's no mistaking it. That depth, 
that internal glow, that moment of discovery. So you crouch closer, you rinse it in nearby water. You let your fingers tell the story. Is it cold? Does it feel like glass? Is it heavier than it should be? You tap it gently against your tooth. Real quartz will feel hard and produce a sharp tap, while glass gives a duller response. Next time you walk a mountain trail or wander through a dry gully, remember, the earth is always speaking. It just takes someone with patience to listen. And this is only the beginning. Because the deeper your journey goes, the more you'll start to see signs others miss. You'll begin to recognize old mining tailings by the unnatural mounds of rock. You'll learn the whispers of the terrain, the way certain colors in the earth hint at the minerals below. You'll start chasing rainstorms, knowing that freshly eroded soil reveals hidden veins. You'll follow birds to gravel pits, watch insects gather where moisture clings to clay. Every element becomes a clue. Gem hunting without equipment isn't primitive, it's intuitive. It's about reading the world around you like a living map. In one moment, you're just another hiker, and in the next, you're holding something millions of years old. That shimmer in your hand? It didn't come from a store. It didn't come from a lab. It came from a story written by the planet itself, crafted in heat and pressure long before humans ever walked the earth. You found it simply by knowing how to look. And now that you know how, let's take things even deeper. Stay with me because the ground you walk on is far richer than you think. Keep your senses sharp, because we're heading into new territory now. Places where the ground speaks in whispers, and where nature hides her gems, not in plain sight, but in the rhythm of the land. One of the most overlooked spots in gemstone hunting is the humble landslide zone. Places where hillsides have given way to gravity, these scars in the earth are not just warnings, they're invitations. When rock and soil tumble down slopes, they tear through geological layers, often exposing material untouched by light for thousands of years. Look carefully along the debris. Walk the base where the slope softens out. Scan for glints of quartz or the waxy gleam of chalcedony. If you're lucky, a pocket torn from a mineral vein might have spilled its secret right into the open. And what about beaches? Not all gemstones are born in mountains. Many are delivered, polished, and placed by the tides. In certain coastal regions, pebbles of jasper, agate, even peridot roll ashore like forgotten relics. The ocean, ancient and restless, grinds them smooth and leaves them sparkling in the sun. Dig a few inches below the wet sand where the waves break. Sift through the gravel with your fingers. What you're looking for isn't size, it's texture. Agates often have a waxy feel. Jaspers are smooth and solid. Sea polished garnets can show up as deep red beads among the gray. Tide pools can also be hiding places. The receding water sometimes tucks gemstones into crevices between volcanic rock. It's almost as if the sea herself leaves little treasures for those patient enough to kneel and look. Next, shift your eyes toward the dry, toward desert washes and arid landscapes. These regions are often old volcanic fields where pressure and heat once shaped crystals beneath the surface. When the rain finally comes and washes away the dust, you're left with a gemstone hunter's playground. Walk in early morning or late afternoon. That's when the sun casts just the right angle to make hidden gems gleam. The heat may be high, but so is the payoff. And when you're exploring old paths, especially ones near historical sites, be mindful of what's beneath your feet. Ancient trails were often carved through mineral-rich zones. You may stumble across a forgotten outcrop where opal once grew, or a hill of discarded gravel, rich with barrel fragments. Now here's a strategy most people overlook. Follow the wildlife. Bees, for example, are drawn to clay-rich soils, especially where moisture rises from underground springs. 
These same spots can host clay-bound gemstones like turquoise and chrysoprase. When you see bees collecting near an earthy bank, take a closer look. The soil might be telling a very different story. Also, observe the plant life. Some plants thrive only in specific mineral-rich conditions. Known as indicator species, they grow where certain elements accumulate. For example, wild grasses sometimes flourish over iron-rich terrain, exactly the kind of ground where garnet or hematite might be found. Keep a notebook. Document what grows where. Patterns will begin to emerge. And let's not forget about the forgotten gravel pits. Wherever construction happens, old quarries, roadside cuts, even ditches near railroad lines, there's a high chance the soil was disturbed from deep within the earth. These areas can yield smoky quartz, calcite clusters, or even small rubies if you're in the right zone. But what separates casual finders from consistent discoverers is memory. Start building a mental map. Keep a log of colors you saw, shapes you recognized, what the soil felt like, what the weather was, over time, these mental notes evolve into instinct. And instinct, that's what makes a real gemstone hunter. And here's where we lean into your greatest natural tools, your hands, feel the stones. Real gemstones often have a coolness, even under the sun. They're heavier, denser, sometimes even magnetic if iron is present. Don't just rely on looks. Let your palms translate the stone story. Sometimes it's not even the gemstone that tells you it's near. It's the matrix, the host rock. If you find feldspar, quartz, and mica together, you're likely near a pegmatite vein, which often carries aquamarine, garnet, and topaz. If the rock breaks unevenly with sharp, glassy edges, you're likely handling quartz and possibly near an amethyst pocket. Every step becomes a study every pause, a decision. Now, what if it rains? Good, rain exposes, cleanses, reveals. Go back to the same trail the next day. You'll be amazed. A crystal that was buried yesterday might now be exposed and gleaming. Muddy hillsides shed layers, streams run clearer. You can see the bottom gravel sparkle like it's been stirred by time itself. Let's talk color again. Sometimes gemstones hide not because they're rare, but because their colors don't shout. Smoky quartz, for example, looks like dirty glass, but when held to the sky, it smolders like fire in a storm cloud. Serpentine has an oily green sheen, almost moss-like. Amazonite hides in granite boulders like turquoise trapped in snow. Train your eyes to see quiet color, not just the bright, and always trust the odd one out. If you're sifting through pebbles and one catches your attention without knowing why, trust that feeling. Intuition is your guide. That pebble with the oddly symmetrical face or that one patch of ground where all the stones look off, those are usually signs. So now you know nature has always offered her most precious secrets to those who pay attention. You don't need high-tech tools or expensive gear. Just your eyes, your hands, your patience, and a sense of wonder. The next time you step outside, remember, the earth is speaking. Through every pebble, every shimmer in the stream, every slope of an old hill. If you learn how to listen, you'll find more than just gemstones. You'll find a connection. Thank you for walking this journey with us. If you enjoyed this adventure and want more eye-opening, ground-shifting discoveries like this, make sure to subscribe to EGS Pro, where we turn the soil of science, history, and natural mystery into stories that shine. Until next time, stay curious, stay grounded, and never stop exploring. EGS Pro, unearthing the extraordinary one stone at a time.